Over the years, I've delivered thousands of sales meetings and I've also trained hundreds of salespeople and we've delivered tens of thousands of sales meetings as a team. And I wanna talk you through today, what do we do in a sales meeting to get really high conversions? I'm gonna talk you through our framework, step by step, you know, we don't believe that sales is about having a friendly chit chat. We believe it's about going through a set of scientific steps to get to the outcome as fast as we can, respecting everybody's time, including our own. So I know sales is one of those hot topics. People feel a bit scared with it. They feel a bit nervous. If I ask people for a word association to sales, a lot of people say sleazy or pushy or negative or uh, high pressure. I want you to completely eradicate that. All of that goes back to the 1970s used car salesman. Hasn't been true for 50 years. Fast forward to today, sales is about professionalism and high-end luxury. If we look at the businesses and the brands that spend the most time, energy, effort, money on perfecting their sales conversations, it's luxury brands like LVMH and professional brands like uh, like the consulting firms or the big software companies. And the old outdated ideas of pushy salespeople, that doesn't work, it's not an effective strategy. Even if you were comfortable being pushy with people, it wouldn't help you in any particular way. Sales is about professionalism and delivering a high-end experience. So let's go through step-by-step, step, what do we cover in a sales meeting to make sure that we get the result as quick as possible, making sure that we respect our time and respect the person we're talking to his time and that we get the most done. The first step is about framing. So framing is about all the stuff that happens around the sale. It's in the lead up to the sale, it's the way that you present, it's the way that you present yourself. Uh, if you're on Zoom, it's your background. If you're in a live environment, it's the room that you're in. All of those things are part of the framing. Think about a beautiful priceless uh, painting. When it's hanging in the National Portrait Gallery, we know that it's expensive. We know that it's a, a magnificent masterpiece. If it was just hanging up in a local cafe, we probably wouldn't recognize it for the full value that it is. And that's because of the framing. The frame, literally the frame sets the scene that something great is about to happen. Some people mess up their entire sales process with poor framing. I've actually sat in and looked at a lot of people's sales processes and I think, hmm, this doesn't look high end. It doesn't look luxury. It doesn't look professional. Something is giving away that it's not quite right. And when we fix that, we immediately get a better result. So look at your sales meeting through fresh eyes. Imagine you zoom out and kind of look down and sort of have a look at the whole situation. Does it look like a professional high end experience or is a little bit shabby and needs a little bit of an improvement. Okay, so the next thing is about rapport building. We need to get on the same page. Rapport means that we're in connection, we're in rhythm, we've got chemistry together. So we might break the ice with a little bit of chit chat, a little bit of get to know you. We might talk about how we know each other. We might talk about um, some of the things that we've got in common. So that's a little bit of rapport building. Typically, this doesn't need to be more than say three or four minutes long. It's just a little bit of ice breaking to make sure that we're in rapport. How do you know that you're in rapport? Typically, you can feel a sense of chemistry, the conversation starts to flow. So once you're in rapport, you can move to the next step. So the next step I like to ask permission. And the permission that I like to ask is I like to say, we can have a general chat today, or I can take you through a little bit of a process that should speed things along and we can find out whether we can help each other or not, or we can help you or not. And would you like to just have a general chat or would you like me to kind of ask some key questions to be able to speed things up. Um, I love to just ask permission and put it on the table like that. Most people say they would love to go through a bit of a process. So here's the process. Process is step one, we need to find out what their present situation is. Then step two, we need to find out what their future desired outcome looks like. And then the third thing is we need to know what have they tried that hasn't worked? What are the obstacles in the way? What are the criteria that they've got? Um, or what are the barriers to getting results? So let's use an example of a fitness trainer trying to sign up a new client. They need to know what's the current situation, what's their current level of fitness, what's the desired situation, where do they wanna to get to, and what have they tried, what hasn't worked, what are their barriers, what are their criteria, what are the, some of the things that have to happen in order to get that result as far as they're concerned. So that's kind of discovering the lay of the land. That's figuring out what's their world look like in their head. So that's what we wanna do. We wanna piece together that understanding of what's going on in the customer's mind first. Once we do this, we ask permission to change gears again. This is where I would say, I've got a good sense of your situation. I understand where you are, I understand what you want, I understand what you've tried that hasn't worked, I understand your criteria. And I'd say, here's what I'd like to do. I'd like to share with you some key insights that I have about your situation. I'd like to share with you some big picture insights that I think apply to you. Now, this is where I wanna have some key insights and I wanna share some expertise. I wanna tell people uh, when I'm talking to them, this is what I've noticed about your situation. So these are big picture principles. This is not trying to sell a product or a service just yet. This is just 
summing up their situation, giving people a higher level view of their situation than they came in with. So this is a step that demonstrates authority, expertise, it demonstrates you know what you're talking about and that you really understand their situation in some cases better than they do. So let me give you an example. Let's say you went to a fitness trainer and they understood your whole situation. Imagine if they said to you, can I share with you some insights about why you haven't been losing weight? Or can I share with you some insights about your body type and what that means for your training routine? Right? You'd be amazed, you'd be blown away and you go, wow, you're sharing with me something of value straight away. So those insights are an important part of the process that most people leave out. Now the next thing is that once we've got those insights, we move to the next step which is to share a methodology. A methodology is a step-by-step -step approach from going from where you are to where you want to be and this is where you break it down into steps for people. You say based on what you've told me this is what I think we need to do. Step one is this, step two is this, step three is this, step four is this. These are the key things that would make the biggest difference to you. These are the steps for you getting what it is that you want and you outline those steps in the language of the customer so they understand what's going to happen. They understand the order of things, they understand that you've put a bit of thought into the process that would get them what they want. And then finally, we package that up into a solution. So we actually tell the customer that the way to access all of that methodology, that steps, those insights, is through this particular product or service. And you might say that there are different versions of that product or service. There's a gold, silver, and bronze version, or there's a particular price point that you recommend, um, or there's a recommendation of products and services all packaged up for them. So this is where you tell them what they should buy in order to get what it is that they want. At this point, the customer's gonna wanna stop and pause and reflect. And this is where you move into the next step, which is to discuss. So the way that I normally do this is I would say, is it okay to present you with a solution that I think uh, would be suitable and I present the solution I say how does that land for you or does that fit what you had in mind and people then open up for discussion sometimes I invite uh, negative feedback I might say that's the big picture of the solution is there anything about that you don't like right because I want to invite a discussion what I'm looking for is not to force something onto someone I'm inviting a discussion about whether that fits I don't want to sell anything to anyone if it's not a perfect fit for what they're trying to achieve so I want to open up that discussion I've clearly articulated what I think is the recommended solution and now I want them to sort of explore whether it fits what they've got in mind what most customers tend to do is they typically list the things that they like about the solution and they might list two or three things that aren't perfect maybe they say oh I thought it was going to be a little bit cheaper or I thought we could have done that faster uh, or I thought that it would involve more or involve less uh, or I wish that it came in blue or I wish that we could do it in purple right whatever it is that they say you can discuss that as a professional you can say oh we do have it in blue uh, you could say actually we could tailor this to meet your needs we could uh, adjust this, we could remove this and it would fit within your budget. So this is where you have a discussion about making sure that it fits with their expectations. Finally, people get to the point where they say, you know what, I think that's right. And you say, would you like to go ahead? Or another great closing question is, when would you like to get started? And what you do is you put the ball into the customer's court so they can say, yes, I do wanna go ahead or I'd like to get started ASAP. And then you can say, great, let's get all of this organized for you. And then you can do whatever it is you need to do to onboard that customer. Now, one of the things that I like to do is make sure that there's a lot of momentum around forward motion into a smooth onboarding. I don't wanna kind of like fill in the price and the credit card or whatever it is, the payment related stuff, and then freeze I want to say great let's fill in the payment related stuff and then we'll actually get all the information that we need for the next steps which is the onboarding so we can get started straight away I know that you as a business owner a big emotional moment for you might be collecting that payment but for the customer the emotional uplift is in getting started so we want to make sure that the focus is on getting started and that the formality of getting things paid for is just the formality so that we can get started at the end we complete the sale and we make sure that we end on an emotional uplift and we want to finish on a positive and we want to get uh, a customer started. Or if someone says that it's not the right time or it's not the right budget, we still want to finish on a positive experience. We want to conduct ourselves in such a way that if the whole thing had been filmed and put onto YouTube, that we would have no problems with people watching it, that, that we conducted ourselves respectfully and we were thoughtful and considerate and that we were professional and that we delivered a high-end experience for every single person that we connected with and whether they go ahead or not we're always looking after people and we're always finishing on a high point um, so it's important to make sure that you end all your sales meetings regardless of outcome on a positive 
and prioritize the relationship over the transaction regardless of what happens. So I hope you like that. It's a quick fly through. We normally do that sales training in about six hours, but I wanted to give you a little bit of a snapshot as to what we're thinking about when we do sales training. I think it's really important for every entrepreneur or early stage founding team to do sales training because it's so aligned to creating great products that people love and it's so aligned to what you have to do as an entrepreneur, which is to sell your business or sell your stuff, to sell your products and services. It's a core component of being a successful entrepreneur. If you've not done sales training in a while, I hope this is a good little starting point for you to just kind of reconnect with that importance of a great sales process. So I hope you've enjoyed that video. Normally we would do that sales training in about six hours, uh, but I hope that's given you a good fly through of what a successful professional sales approach entails. Here's what I'd like you to do. Leave me a comment below. What is your view of sales? How do you feel about sales? Has this video changed your view of sales? What are you gonna work on to improve your sales process? Leave it all in the comments below. I, I read every single comment, so I'd love to see your comment as well. Give it a like, give it a subscribe, and I look forward to sharing even more with you on your entrepreneurial journey ahead.